Good morning, everyone. I'll try to stay in the time because we're sort of running late everywhere. Who of you has ever heard of Bitcher's blockchain? That's not too bad for a completely decentralized organization. Uh, as said, my name is Annemieke Dirkis. I'm a novelty in a very innovative field because I'm, so far that I know, the only globally decentralized voted person to represent a completely decentralized organization. No CEO, no company, no address, nothing. It's completely decentralized. If we look at what the history of it is, in 2014, early 2014, Bitcher's blockchain was based, was launched. Um, Bitcoin was, of course, its predecessor. There were lots of things that people would like differently, especially for financial transactions. So a group of engineers made graphene technology which is today the base under many leading blockchains. Six of the 10 biggest ones are at this moment graphene based. Not many people know that because a decentralized organization has no marketing. It has nothing, it's on a decentralized blockchain. At the moment, it's the fastest running blockchain on earth. It's the longest running blockchain, over 32 million blocks already. If you go downstairs to the booth of my esteemed colleagues, you see the running screen of the performance of the blockchain itself at its heart. Uh, there is no longer blockchain on Earth. It's proven technology, and we had excellent keynote address this morning, and a lot of the solutions that were on the table for the future, I was thinking it's already there. Just have a look. It's just not marketed, and maybe you don't know about it, but it's certainly worth exploring whether this answers to your possibilities. We've got over 1.1 million accounts people. That's a substantial community. And they're all active. At this moment, it's sister Steemit, maybe some of you know that as a content um, uh, platform, account for usually around 70% of all block activity worldwide. That's all transactions in the blockchain space, crypto transactions worldwide, three quarters. Not by nominal volume, because there are a lot of small transactions, because this has got nothing to do with you know, uh, pushing markets in the financial corner. This is the graphene family, because the technology is so outstanding, but it has still to cater for a, a base, a group, a community. So if you want to do something really special, what they would do is do hard fork. For those of you who don't know the terminology, it's basically a clone, a copy of the open source technology you take it and then you start developing your own specialized purpose for which you want to use it. The beauty of it is, Bitcher's blockchain is on development constantly. So all the incrementals, you can just nitpick, cherry pick, whatever you want to call it, and all the new technology that's developed, you get free on your doorstep. Whether you use it or not, it's yours. You see that we have here in all sorts of categories we have um, things going on, basic protocol, economic data, gaming, financials, prediction markets, social platforms. All of these you see here, and I roughly counted them this morning, there are about 27 on them. They are existing, running enterprises, guys. It's got nothing to do with ICOs, future plans. This, everything you see here on screen is the real deal. And some of them already for more than four years. So if you look at this graphene family, a lot of these are open source as well. So the interesting thing is that you have communities that have open source repositories on GitHub that look into each other's source codes and cherry pick for their own next development. So you see commercial enterprise on top of collaboration and community effort which is a thing that's especially supported by the decentralized idea. Some companies take a hard fork of the BitShares technology and take it centralized because the technology is outstanding, but because they may be a bank or another organization, it doesn't suit them to be decentralized because of regulatory issues. That's also a possibility. So how does it work? The complete community is run by vote people. If you have a good idea, you put it up there, 
And if you have a majority of the votes of the outstanding BTS, BTS is the core native token, and the only thing that it gives you is voting rights. So skin in the game means that you got something to say. Every BTS counts for one vote. So how does that work? At the time when they developed BitShares blockchain, they had 2.7 billion shares, BitShares, BTS, core native token. 1.7 were divided among the people who spent all their time and their energy in developing it, and 1 billion they kept in what we call the working capital. Out of this, they sent BTS to the guys that do the block producing, and they do the witnesses. Currently, there are about 27 super nodes handling the decentralized uh, block production and the, the, the whole system. The witnesses are being, uh, well, rewarded in BTS. If you look at the situation with worker proposals, it's very important to realize that any of you in this room could put up a worker proposal for future development on the BitShares blockchain, and it's up to the community to say whether they would want to invest in this. That I'm standing here today on Decentralized is because my community felt it was an excellent idea to go here. It's as simple as that. They fund it because they think it's important that I explain to you what this product, this decentralized environment could mean to you. So what another thing is, is the technology that's been developed within these worker proposals. As from, I think, the end of 2016, we started professionalizing this. There are now uh, a core backend team. Ryan here is the American pro project manager of that. He's got people in South America, Europe, all over the world working at uh, a real worker proposal for development. We've got two UI teams, We've got several other things going for websites, for uh, purposes of education. You can go online and you can see at how BitShares works, exactly how things uh, are organized. You can go on bitshares.foundation, have information and to all sorts of um, different stuff. If you have BTS, maybe you're not a technician, and you've got no idea what is all going to do in the technology sector. Then you can give your vote to somebody you trust, has a technological advantage over you to have a decision making for you. It is vital that you understand that in 2017, when the SEC came really down on the cryptocurrency and the blockchain environment, that we needed to do something. So that is why we entered a worker proposal for a spokesperson like myself now. I've got the signing authority within my work proposal, so I sign contracts with organizations like Huobi for a listing of BTS, and we do a legal opinion letter uh, that we needed in the United States for explaining what BTS was actually all about. And what I do is I stand here today. It's not all I do. I've got my own blockchain companies, and the BitShares Blockchain Foundation just sort of hires me in for the hours that I needed for me to be here. You can do anything on the BitShares Blockchain by ways of tokenization. We heard a lot, and we will hear today a lot about smart contracts. BitShares Blockchain has already a lot of ready-made smart contracts in it. You don't need to make them yourself. Uh, a lot of the traditional things like uh, collateralized loaning and all that sort of thing that we know from traditional economic situations are already foreseen in this blockchain. If you take a little bit of time to really research what all the possibilities are, you see there are very uh, a lot of things going. You can create your own token. There are about three and a half thousand on the blockchain. Not all of them really functional, but anybody can do it. It's completely decentralized. It's got bit assets on it, which is derivatives from uh, standing fiat tokens. We use ourselves uh, BitUSD as an off-ramp for BTS and how we reward witnesses and block producers. It's a very interesting field. We heard this morning uh, one of the keynote speakers talk about stablecoin. Uh, you've seen uh, BitUSD mentioned in there. I'm sure if you read the report of Garrick that you'll find many interesting information about the different possibilities with stablecoins. BitCNY is a market that's developing very rapidly. It's one of the key things that you see at this moment that people are looking for this type of assets. 
I want to thank you all for your attention. I stayed well within the time. There's a lot I could say about Bitches Blockchain. I could talk about it like for three days on the go. It's not a problem. Um, I want to emphasize that this is accessibility for emerging economies. You don't need servers, you don't need uh, expertise that comes at a very high price from first developed countries. You can go on the internet, you can acquire the information, and you can do this yourself. So it's very important that the message out there that decentralized tokenization of your business, of your economic progress, of your banking, is a possibility that's out there for everybody already for four years. That's really an important message. I talk to UN people regularly, and that is one of the foundations for a new form of banking in emerging countries. 3.2 billion people on this earth have no bank account people. So it means that without financial inclusion, they will be left out. They can't progress. And that's a very important message for us in the decentralized environment. Decentralized means it's a trusted environment because it's trustless. It's on a blockchain. And these developments, we heard earlier Eva talk about payments. On the blockchain, you can pay in under a second. I don't see any traditional bank do that. It's the transmission of value in a blockchain that BTS can play a vital role to. We can have payment systems on this system for any type of country, any type of development without enormous cost. I think that's a very, very interesting point of view that we need to carry forward. I want to thank you all. I'll be here all day and all evening. So if you want to talk some further, I've got two colleagues here. One is sitting out there, Ryan. Ryan, stand up. And the other one is Alex. Alex speaks Greek. So he is Greek, right, Alex? <laughs> um, you can approach them at the booth or, you know, in the, around the, uh, the premises. And uh, I want to thank you all for your attention.